Hi, I'm Phil Parker. I've been working for the last 25 years in healthcare, particularly looking at new approaches to things that there don't seem to be any really great solutions for currently. What I'd like to talk about today is something that for me is very, very close to my heart, which is a subject called PNI. P stands for psycho, the N for neuro, and the I for immunology. Psycho, neuro, immunology. What it looks at is the interaction between the way we think, our expectations and our beliefs and opinions, the psycho, and how that impinges and impacts our neurology, our brain, our central nervous system, and peripheral nervous system, and how that in turn affects our immunological function, the way our body responds to illness and wellness. It's a field that people are often a bit confused about. When they, some people hear PNI, psycho, particularly the word psycho, neuroimmunology, they launch into an idea about what's called somatoform disorders. Somatoform disorders are very different. Somatoform disorders are where you think you have symptoms, but actually you don't have any physical symptoms, you just think you do. People often mislabel this as psychosomatic. That's not what psychosomatic means at all. Somatoform is the current term. So somatoform disorders are where you don't actually have a problem, you just think you do. This is very different from what we're looking at with PNI, which is real, real physical issues. And PNI looks at the linkage between the way we think and our neurology and our symptoms and our health and says, is there an interface between the way we think, our opinions about things, our neurology and our immunology? And the research is, yes, there is. What is the research? Well, interestingly, one of the pieces of research is done every single day, which is every drug has to be tested against a placebo. A placebo is considered to be an inert substance or an inert treatment that has no real effect, except you have to test every drug against a placebo because we know that a certain proportion of people will respond to the placebo, even though it contains nothing. They will have a response as a result of taking it having that treatment, having that drug that contains nothing. What's active here? Well, we're getting a physical change from something that's not physical because the pill contains nothing. Daniel Merman, the professor of anthropology in the Michigan Dearborn, has studied this extensively. He likes to call it something different. He says, in fact, the placebo effect isn't a very good term because placebo means nothing, this thing is completely inert, having an effect. Well, nothing cannot have an effect. By nature, it has no effect. So he prefers the term meaning response, that it's not the pill that does it, it's the meaning that it has for us. It's a very, very interesting paper that Daniel was talking about to me just yesterday, where they've just done an open uh, placebo trial. Because the idea is that if you give someone a placebo, then it's their uh, unknowingness that they've taken this inert pill that causes the, the physiological changes. In the latest study that they've done, they've given people a placebo. Uh, they studied people with IBS. One group had nothing done to them. The other group had an open-label placebo. So they said to the people, this is a placebo. It has nothing within it at all. It's completely inert. It's chemically inactive. However, studies have shown if we give you this chemically inactive thing, it might have an effect. So we'd like you to take this pill, which contains nothing, and see what happens. And even with that amount of uh, coaching to say these pills don't have anything in it, they still found that the group who took the pill did better than the group who didn't, which is astonishing, really. Again, it really shows the power of the way we think in terms of making changes. So P&I, the field of P&I, has been around for a long time. Um, it, it's ancient to some extent in that we've known every time you fall over, uh, if your mum holds you and tells you you're going to get better, it will probably make you feel better. But certainly in the 1900s, early 1900s, Walter Kahn, the professor of uh, physiology at Harvard, started to become very interesting from his studies on animals to see how they responded to stress, how that affected their healing potential. Professor Hans Selye in Canada did some similar work in the uh, 30s, 40s and 50s. Very, very good science behind this. PNI, it's probably the most important area that we can look into, I think, in terms of science and health. Looking at the interaction between how we think and our physiology. Why? Well, because how we think is something that's constantly inputting into our system. If what we're thinking isn't very useful or the beliefs we have about things aren't very health-giving, 
that's almost like continuing taking a poison, a destructive element in your body. If we can access that, that will make a positive change. The other really fascinating thing about PNI is that it's cheap. Our thoughts are things that we're in charge of. If we could take better charge of those, we can become more influential in our health. We can do it whenever we want to. So it opens up the possibility that we have interesting and direct access to influence our physiology just by changing the way we approach things and think about things. I recommend you look into it more. PNI, fascinating field, there's loads of research. Say the research into placebos, there's so much of it. The research into the effect of the way we think is extraordinary. They even did a trial recently where they got people to exercise this little muscle here. And what they found was that in three groups, one group didn't do any exercise, the second group exercised it with little weight, and the third group just thought about exercising it. So in their mind, they imagined themselves doing this. They didn't actually do it. The first group who did no exercise, it made no difference. The second group who did some exercise with a weight, it made the muscles stronger. The third group who just thought about doing the exercise but didn't, they got an increase in strength in their muscle too. So we've got a direct link there between what people are thinking and changes in their physiology. This is science, this is research. Sounds odd, but there's so much research around it to demonstrate that there is a really good, genuine link between the way we think and the way our bodies respond. This is something we should take advantage of.